Good morning. Today is a special day because, as you see in the title, we're picking up my first race car. If you've been following my channel, you know that my five-year crazy moonshot plan is to make professional driving my primary source of income. No, I don't mean Lyft or Uber, I mean performance driving. So that could be racing, that could be instructing, that could be a combination of everything. YouTube, like all anything related to performance driving and race cars and supercars, it's my dream. Those have always been my my long my you know longest passion uh, since I've been like four or five years old. And so I want to see if I can just follow this journey and see where it takes me. So yes, we are in the garage. This space is about to be taken up by a race car. Stay tuned, you'll find out what it is. Um, also, if you've been following my garage remodel series, you know that this whole space is going to become a sanctuary. Well, that's a strong word, but a safe, climate controlled, protected place for race cars, for supercars. And I'm in the middle of that right now. Um, you guys saw that I did all the demolition work. My wife and I did that. Took out all the old insulation. Um, now we have it exposed down to the studs. We The next step is to get electrical done. Um, as with any contractor, it's just hard to get, it's hard to hire someone. It takes a lot of time to make these phone calls just to get someone out here, let alone give an estimate, get back to you, and then agree on something. That can take, honestly, take months. Um, it's just with, with the way things go. So I'm trying to get an electrician out here so that we can then do insulation. I think I've settled on insulation. I'm gonna do closed cell spray foam for the ceiling. I think that's the best option given this is an unvented roof and not much depth um, in the rafters. And then I'm gonna do something like mineral wool, um, just bat insulation in the walls and then call it a day. So electrician, insulation, um, and then you know heating and cooling. Um, anyways, that's beside the point. Uh, the point today is we're picking up a race car. I want to give a special thanks to my friend Mike. He is actually driving two hours or more to come help me pick up this car, um, borrowing a truck and trailer. Um, in fact, he's the one who introduced me to this car because he was going to buy it. Um, he's a longtime racer and instructor and, and driver in uh, Sports Car Club of America. I trust him. He's a really good guy. Um, anyways, he showed me this car, uh, thought it would be a great car to, to get. We walked it over, I went to look at it. Um, did as, about, as much due diligence as I could, and so I feel really good about this. It's gonna need some work, no doubt about it. Um, but hey, that's gonna be a good opportunity for me to just start working on my first race car. And one final thing, I know you guys are getting antsy, one final thing before we go pick up the car. Uh, none of this would have been possible without the power of the community in the racing and automotive world. It's crazy how positive, how helpful, and how um, resourceful the car community is and the power of networking. I've never really realized the, the true power of networking until I dove headfirst into this five-year journey. I won't get into all the specifics. I think I'd, I want to get into that in another video of just how one thing led to another, how with the support of my wife and uh, taking certain risks led me to meeting certain people who introduced me to other people who introduced me to opportunities where I met other people who introduced me to other opportunities. It's really been incredible to just witness even in this year and a half how just going, showing up um, gives me the opportunity to meet someone who then introduces me and then here I am buying a race car. So I, I want to make a video on just the power of, I don't know, it, it just how, how strong and good the car community is and how helpful they are. And I certainly feel like I need to start passing it on to people, but I am very early in my journey. So, all right, enough of that. Let's go pick up this race car. <laughs> all right, guys. I'm back home, things did not go as planned. Like, what a ridiculous day. Let me tell you what happened. All right, so my friend Mike, uh, who hel is helping me, he helped find the car for me. He came down um, with the truck and trailer to help me go pick up the car, because I don't have a truck and trailer yet. 
And for the past month or so, I've been communicating with the owner, the current owner of the car um, over Facebook Marketplace. And he's been super responsive, um, never been any communication issues. I went to see the car in person. He was kind of super trusting. Mike had gone to see the car. He let us both you know, sit in it and kind of do whatever. I was able to do a compression test in the car. Like he was fine with us taking a look at the car and, and doing whatever. Um, seemed like a really trustworthy guy. And so um, I've been communicating with him up until now. And we had agreed for the past few weeks that today, um, Saturday would be the day that we come pick up the car. And so we've both kind of, all three of us, the owner, Mike and I ha have had this date in our calendars for a few weeks now. So the day comes, obviously, um, Mike gets here to my house at around 10 a.m. and we're gonna go head to where the race car is about an hour away. And so I, the last I had spoken to the owner was last night and said, hey, we'll be there tomorrow around noon. Um, we're, um, you know, can't wait to pick up the car. And we were talking a lot about like, you know, printing out the bill of sale and kind of just some of the specifics, confirming everything, the price, what was included in the sale. And so um, I spoke to him last night around seven or eight o'clock. This morning when we, uh, before we left, I said, hey, we're about to leave. We'll be there in about an hour. And um, when we're about, a half an hour away, <clears throat> I messaged him again and said um, just about something about the trailer, like where we could park. And then I told Mike, I was like, huh, like, I don't want to get worried yet, but I haven't heard from this guy this morning. He knows we're coming today, um, but it is a little strange that he normally sees my message and responds, you know, right away. But on the day of, we're on our way over and he's not responding, again, through Facebook uh, mess Marketplace. So we get there, we find a place to park, a perfect parking spot on the street, walk up, he lives in an apartment complex, so we walk up behind the complex to the parking lot where the car is. We see the car there, we see the race car there in the same spot that it was when we both looked at it. It's not street legal, so it's not really being driven around. The car is there, but the owner is not responding. I message him again and again and again. I don't have his phone number, but I never thought there would be a reason to need the phone number because he was very responsive through Facebook Marketplace. And typically, if you're buying something there, you know, you don't wanna necessarily have to use your phone number. And so there were no red flags up until this point, but it was very strange that he was not responding. Mike and I, at that point, were getting worried. So we go check out the car. I'm every five or so minutes sending another message to this guy on Facebook. I tried calling him through Facebook Messenger, but we're not friends, so the call doesn't go through. And yeah, at this part, at this point we were getting we were getting worried. So we were like, okay, we gotta be creative. Like, what do we do in this scenario? We don't know which unit this guy lives in in the apartment complex. We don't have his phone number, but if we had his phone number, like, you know, he wasn't responding to us. And we could not think of a reason why this would be happening. Like on one hand, we're like, is he trying to scam us? But I hadn't given him any money. So like there would have been no scam. At, at, in worst case, he would have like, if he was just weird and just wanted to see people make all this effort to come down and then just laugh at us from the window. But we couldn't, we didn't think that was the case. Um, and so the other end of the spectrum was like, is he okay? Is he, is he injured? Is he, is he like, what happened? Did something happen to him in the apartment? Um, because it was just, it was bizarre that out of nowhere, he stopped commuting, communicating with us. So we went to a nearby Dunkin' Donuts, kind of just put our heads together and said, huh, what, what could we do? About a half an hour, 30, 40 minutes had passed at this point. I had sent him like 15 messages. I knew I wasn't getting through to him at this point. And then um, I remembered I had been in touch with the previous owner before this guy um, as I was doing diligence on the car trying to track down some answers. And I was able to message the previous owner and ask him, hey, do you have the current owner's phone number? Um, and he didn't, he didn't have the phone number. And I explained the situation. I was like, yeah, we're supposed to pick up the car, um, but out of nowhere, he's just not responding. Do you, and then he's like, I don't have the phone number, but let me see if I have a picture of the bill of sale with his address. He did have his address. Uh, obviously we were at the building, but we didn't know the unit number. He was able to send me the unit number. And with that, Mike and I were like, okay, we think we, we have his unit number, <clears throat> um, 
but neither of us, just given how kind of bizarre the situation was, neither of us felt super comfortable going into the apartment comp, into the, the building and finding his, his door and knocking on it. We just, we weren't quite comfortable doing that. So this is where it gets funny. Uh, I wouldn't have thought of this, but I'm so glad Mike thought of this. He's like, well, maybe we should call the local police. You know, not so much about the car. Obviously we wanna go home with the car, but like, maybe this guy isn't okay. Maybe he died in his apartment, like who knows? So we kind of went back and forth, ruminated on that idea for, for 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and it was getting close to one o'clock. So like in the grand scheme of things, it hadn't been that long. I was thinking like, you know, if we call the police and we tell them, hey, we're supposed to buy a car at noon and the guy isn't here at one o'clock, like they would just laugh at us. But uh, we did it anyway. I picked up the phone, I called the local police and they picked up, I explained the situation. I said, hey, I'm in a bit of a unique situation. I'm here to pick up a car. I've been you know, communicating with the seller for the past month. He's been very responsive. We agreed on a date. Here I am, and you know, out of nowhere, he's just you know incommunicado. He's just not not answering me. Something's off, and we just want to check that this that this guy's okay. Um, could you send someone out? And you know, he took some information, sent out a cop. Actually, two two cops came by. Um, it was a, a woman and a man. And when they got here, we kind of gave them some information, but they seemed like they had been briefed on the situation. So we told them we think he's in this unit. Uh, we're not positive, but if you could just check on, you know, and see what's going on. So they go in the building, Mike and I are outside, like already with like a, a crazy story. Like we did not expect the day to turn out like this, having to call the cops. They go into the building, less than five minutes later, they come out, it was a guy and a girl. The, the, the man was very stern, you know, he had a kind of a, you know, a, an attitude, but the woman was more friendly. She comes out, she's like, he's coming down. And we're like, what? She's like, yeah, he just fell asleep. He's coming down. He's ready to sell the car. And we're like, are you kidding me? The dude had fallen asleep. He, <laughs> he had been on a vacation prior, like in five different time zones away and he just got back. And apparently the time zones were all off. And look, I don't know if I'm selling a car, I am making sure that I'm gonna be awake for that. Uh, we, we were in disbelief. We couldn't believe it. We thought maybe he died, maybe he, maybe he had a crazy emergency and he just, everything else became not important and he had to go for that. Um, we couldn't understand what kind of scam this would be. You know, if it was an ambush, we were like, we would have been ambushed by now. Um, we just couldn't believe it. And sure enough, the cops go in there, they come out and they tell us he was asleep and he's, uh, he's on his way down. So yeah, with that, we thought we weren't coming home with a race car, but we got a race car in the garage. Let me show you. Guys, say hello to my 1993 Spec Miata, a purebred, fine little race car. That's right, a nice red 1993, 1.6 liter, four cylinder Mazda Miata. This thing already is race prepped pretty much. Obviously I have a whole punch list of things I need to do with it, but it's got a cage in here. Uh, it's got a, it has been raced in the SCCA, albeit a long time ago and it needs a new log book, but I'm so excited about this. The Miata, Mazda Miata, like, low horsepower car, very lightweight. So if you're into really like fast cars, it may not be the most fun, but look, I've talked to a lot of people. I know a lot of people who have race cars, who race race cars now. And the, the Mazda Miata is one of the best ways to have fun and learn while racing. It is, if you're looking to get started, like I can't think of a better car to do it in than a Mazda Miata.
terms of maintenance and consumables, brakes, tires, fluids, all of that, like I don't know if I can find a car that I can do it cheaper in than a Miata and still do wheel to wheel racing. So yeah, I'm, 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 I think it's gonna be the perfect entry level race car and, um, and maybe just a race car that I use for many years to come because racing Miatas, like that's awesome. So the car came with a bunch of tires, four different, actually five different sets. The ones on the car right now are just the street tires. Those are just for storage. So those aren't gonna be raced on uh, the street wheels and tires. But here I have two sets of wheels. Um, and then uh, let's see here. I got so many tires, I gotta make sense of it all. Two sets of Hoosiers. One are brand new. These are brand new Hoosiers. So if you're in the market for a new set here, let me know, I can sell them for you, sell them to you. Um, some used Hoosiers here with a few heat cycles in them and then two other sets. I'm going to need to get, I think the uh, SSM class that I'll be running uses um, RA1s, Toyo RA1s or something that I'll, I'll probably use on one of these wheel sets. But yeah, all of these came with it. In terms of what I'm gonna to do to the car immediately, well, I know it needs a little bit of work. I'm obviously gonna change the fluids, the oil, maybe the brake fluid, transmission oil, uh, stuff like that. But I also need to work through a few things. So for example, the harness right now, uh, this harness expired in December of 2022, so I need a new harness. Um, I need, it came with two seats. Sorry about the lighting here, it's a little bit dark, but there's two seats in here, a uh, Kirky, and then I don't know what that is. This one is bolted in. I need to see which one fits me better and then use that one and then probably mount the other one in the passenger seat. The one in the passenger seat now is just kind of loose. So uh, sort out the seating situation. I need to obviously get race gear, so helmet, suit, I have gloves, but get shoes, kind of all that stuff. I need to uh, get a battery charger because right now it starts on a, um, a booster. You need a booster to start it. Uh, let's see what else. I mean, there's a lot of things. I need to get jacks to, to be able to lift it up. As far as I know, the exhaust, my friend Mike said, needs to be replaced if I want to run in this particular class, the SSM class. Uh, that exhaust that's currently fitted on the car um, is in ineligible, so I need to replace that. I don't know what kind I need yet, but I have to look at the rules. Uh, what else here? Uh, the decals. So those, you know, probably come off, so I'll probably keep the Mazda decals. Um, Boston Children's Primary Care Alliance. I don't really care for that as a decal. So that'll probably come off. It's got little hearts here. I don't know, those are kind of kind of cute. Uh, no, they'll probably come off. SM, that could stay. I may add another S because it's SSM, Street Stock Miata will be the class I run. I'm going to need numbers, um, but yeah, the decals would be something. Obviously it needs a wash. It's filthy, this car has been sitting outside. But yeah, that's it. We have a race car in the garage. This is a huge step in my journey. It's crazy to think just like a year and a half ago, I was like just in the basement with my wife and she's like, you know, you need to make a plan and pursue this thing that you always talk about. And then I went to racing school and I got my SCCA license and then I got a simulator and then I've been meet, you know, been doing the karting and meeting a ton of people. And like not that long after, I have this Mazda Miata race car in the garage. I'm super thankful to everyone who's helped me. Again, like I said at the beginning of this video, people, I, I could not have done this without other people. And I know it's just the beginning, but still, like I have come a long way and it goes to show you when you have a dream and a goal and you make a plan, it makes, action much more manageable like you know what steps to take and as long as you're moving doors are opening opportunities are opening so yeah i'm super excited to get this thing out on track that's going to do it for this video i'm going to stop it here obviously many more videos on this car to come leave me leave comments below of like what suggestions you have if you have experience with spec miatas if you're just excited like whatever i want to hear it i'm going to need help on this but i'm planning to just learn a ton and really just get to know this car in and out because I'm gonna be racing it and you wanna really know your race car well. Yeah, this is gonna be awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting me on this crazy journey. Like pretty soon I'll be wheel to wheel racing and that's really all I want. So thank you guys so much. Stay tuned for more videos and I will see you guys on the next one.